Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here again tonight. Um, just wanted to come out and um, I've got two verses here. I'm in the first chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. If you want to get your Bible, you're welcome to get your Bible out. Um, you know, I take pride in what I try to do when I come out here. I don't try to waste nobody's time. I try to, as much as I know how, I try to make great eye contact. I try to um, not come out here with some preconceived notion. I don't come out here trying to be the best thing on Facebook or the best thing on YouTube. Um, I try to keep my focus on the Lord, His power, His love, His goodness, His mercy. I try to let my vision look into the camera. Um, my setup in here is very primitive. I'm basically in a room that's maybe uh, 8 by 10, if that. Um, I have one light in here. I do have two lights, but I don't ever run but one light. I'm thankful that I have such a nice light that is above my head that gives me adequate lighting to read my Bible. I've got enough light here, even with my condition of my eyes, to be able to take my head and look down at the Word of God. I don't try to come out here with a pile of verses. I don't have that... Um, I don't have that opportunity to be able to have the chance to read a lot of verses to people that I deal with in nursing homes. Uh, you're lucky to get maybe one or two verses at the most. Uh, these folks want to be talked to. Um, you you want to give them eye contact. You want to see eye contact. You know, when you're looking at someone and you don't see the color of their eyes. And I know there's times that I will look off into an area or look off into a distance or something, but sometimes we do that because we're maybe thinking of something to say, the words. You know, it would be so easy for me to come out here and look at myself in the camera and me look at my eyes on what I see in the camera. But honestly, where my focus is should be right up here at the top. That is where the camera is. And see, I have to train my mind to not be looking over here or not be looking over there. But to have a message that the Lord gives me from within, and then I take and read the verse, I meditate on the verse, I study the verse, and then I break down the verse so that as I'm looking at the camera, I'm paying attention to people that are watching. And that's what I try to do. I try to focus on who it is that I'm talking to. Now, Paul is the writer of these Corinthians that I'm fixing to read to you in. I'm down at verse number 17 in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, now, I hear a lot of people that talk about baptism. Jesus talked about baptism. But when a person gets born again, 
that born again experience gives them a certain amount of baptism. Now, I think we get to the point where we think that the water baptism is a greater baptism. But the day that I got saved was the day that the Lord baptized me without having to be in any water whatsoever. When a person truly gets born again, they have been baptized in to Jesus Christ. Now, am I making fun of water baptism? No, because water baptism is basically take a person that was once lost and now he's been born again of the Spirit. There's people that are around him that sees his life and the day that the comes that the baptism of water takes place, it's a picture of that person that was born in the flesh, lays down his life under the water as a picture of death. It's actually almost like going into a casket and being put under the ground and then digging you back up again. And when you're baptized, you enter under the water as a picture of death. They raise you up in newness of life. But baptism does not save you. There's a lot of religions that will tell you that you need to be baptized. Yes, Jesus said to be baptized. The eunuch was baptized after he heard the gospel. He heard the gospel, and he saw a, a place of water, and he said, Philip, what would hinder me to be baptized? And all that Philip told him was, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, then you can be baptized. And I believe it was that unit that says, I believe in Jesus the Christ. Don't quote me on it. But Philip and the unit went out into the water and that unit was baptized and the Bible doesn't give indication of any more with Philip and the unit. The Philip went his way. The unit went his way. But he was baptized, and all of them people that was with that unit got to see him go under the water. Some of them probably thought he has lost his mind. But he didn't lose his mind. So when Paul was writing here to the Corinthians, he says here, for Christ sent me not to baptize. That wasn't his mission. His mission was to do the next sentence, but to preach the gospel, to say the gospel. What is the gospel? Some people might ask. Well, let me tell you what the gospel is. The gospel is the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. When they hung him on the cross, they put nails in his hands, nails in his feet. They put the crown of thorns on his head. They whipped him. They beat him. They brutalized him. They mocked him. They scourged him. And yet he still laid his arms down to go to the cross and have the nails injected into his hands and feet. And yet he could still save one person on the cross. And he did. The Bible says that he saved that thief because he told him, today you will be with me in paradise. Thank God. But that there's only part of the gospel. The next part is that Jesus died and they took him out of that cross, off the cross, 
and they put him in a borrowed tomb. They wrapped him and they anointed his body and they put him in a grave and he stayed there for three days. Now, what goes on during them three days? I'm not really getting into that. I think there was some place that Jesus went, but he didn't use his body to go. Jesus used his spirit to go. But then what happened? The Bible says that God raised him from the dead. The, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's what we call the good news. Paul came to preach the gospel, the good news. Not with wisdom of words, not with empty words, not with the just words that you read half the Bible. No, I've read to you maybe here one verse, and I've told a couple of stories that is in the Bible. But the Bible says here, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You know what that means? Paul didn't want to use his words because his words without the Lord's words would just make his words empty words. And what he's saying here is he didn't want to use the wisdom of his words without the Spirit of God lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You know what? I definitely do not want to come out here and look into the camera right there where I'm pointing and have people to see me bringing out a message that is not mixed with the spirit of the living God. A message has to be delivered not by man's wisdom because Paul didn't use his wisdom right here. In verse number 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. If you happen to be out here tonight and you hear what I'm saying and you're thinking, man, that guy there is all into himself. No, I'm just reading to you what the Bible says. The Bible says that if you think this gospel is foolishness, then he's saying right here, for the preaching of the cross, meaning the man who died on the cross, the ones that had the one that had nails in his hands, the one that was nailed to the cross and had wore the crown of thorns. We're talking about Jesus, the Christ, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. So if you happen to think this story tonight is foolishness, then it's because you don't believe in the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. See, I'm bringing it out as clear as I know how to bring it out. But unto us, which are saved. Now, who am I talking to tonight? Am I talking to the ones that are lost? I could be. Could I be talking to the ones that are saved? I very well could be. There's a possibility. But what if I was talking to that one that God wanted to show the good news of the gospel to a person that was lost, and they're out here tonight, and they're listening to it. I pride myself in looking at the camera, not looking all around here like this. I'm looking at you and not even my face right now. I'm looking into the camera, and I'm saying right here like this verse here says, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Where does the power of God come from? Salvation. When you get to be born of the Spirit of God, 
you are born into salvation. Why is it that people don't want to mention salvation? Is it because that they might feel like that they're not real good at it? No, here's what you end up learning over a period of time. You learn to get good at talking about how a person gets to be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus to be born again. I'm telling everybody out there on YouTube and Facebook that you need to be born again. And if you have been born again, then you are taking the fact of being saved. It is the power of God. See, the power of God come into you. It indwells in you if you're saved. You know what the gospel is. You know what the good news is. There's a lot of people that have no clue of what the gospel is. I hate to say it, but they have no absolute clue of what the gospel really is. Oh, they hear it preached on occasion now and then. I'm telling you what the gospel is. That is the death, burial, resurrection. Here's what the bottom line, I think, that Paul would say to us if he was here tonight. He would tell you Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I happen to have that verse in memory. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says that God commendeth his love. God aimed his love toward you in that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. See, the gospel was made available to you. Romans 6, 23. Three says the wages of sin is death. You know, we would be in bad shape today if Paul would have stopped with the sentence right there for the wages of sin is death. But he didn't stop there. He said, but the gift of God, thank God for the buts in the Bible. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's what the Bible says. Romans 10 and verse 9. The Bible says that if thou, that's you and I, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, I've got a good mouth on me. Some people says I uses it, I use it too much. Maybe so. But what does that verse say? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Not just Jesus, the Lord Jesus. And believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. See, that goes back to when he died and he was put in the tomb. Thou, that means you, shall be saved. There's no wiggle room in that verse. Romans 10 and verse 13 the Bible says, for whosoever, that's you. I don't even know who I'm pointing to. That is you. That's you. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what the Bible says. First John 5 and 13 these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know, that ye may know that you have eternal life and that ye believe on the name of the Son of God. See, when you get prepared to bring a message, have your verses in your head. Have your verses in your mind. It ain't the number of the verses it's the verses that give salvation. Salvation should be everyone's mandate to bring to this world. I'm happy to be a broke record for the Lord to bring a mandate 
to this world because I believe that's what this world needs today. We don't need a bunch of feel-good, do si do messages. What we need to bring is what thus saith the Lord. That's what we need to bring. We bring the message that the Lord wants us to bring, then it'll be a good message. You won't lose your focus. You won't have to look. If You won't have to wonder if you look like an idiot. You just come out here and you just put your eyes on the camera. My camera is about a foot and maybe 14 inches away from me. My voice carries because I'm a loud person anyway. I have to be loud when, our, when I'm talking to 90-year-old people that's wearing hearing aids. You got to learn how to be loud. You can't just be one that's just, I'm just going to whisper and I'm not going to say a whole lot because I don't want to come across as being, no, I can't do that. I don't mean to yell at nobody, but I'm telling you the gospel of what the gospel says. See, Paul wrote us here, for Christ sent not me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. A lot of people were speaking, but the message doesn't have an effect. You want your message to be effective. There's lives that might be watching I want the people in the nursing home to see my eyes talking to them. I want them to hear my voice speaking in a language that they can tell that I'm speaking to them out of the concern of my soul and my heart because I'm answerable to God for what I say. And as long as I'm quoting Bible and as long as I'm telling people how to be born again, then that's my mission. And I'm going to stick with that mission because I'm answerable to God for that mission. I realize I come across as a broke record, but that's okay. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. You got to ask yourself, are you foolish? I hope not. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So you need to determine if you're the foolish one or you're the saved one. I'll leave that up to you. Elderly Ministry is the website. Right here is the YouTube channel. You can go to YouTube and, and get a hold of me there. There's a phone number that you can call that you can get a hold of me there. I ask you to share the video. I ask you to subscribe to the channel. We have nothing here that we sell, nothing that we market. We simply come out here and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I shared it about the best as I know how. So leave a message when you call. If you need to talk, yell at me. No matter what time it is, the phone is nearby. I'll be glad to talk with you anytime. Share the platform. You, um, Facebook is giving me a fit right now. And so I need your help that if you like the video, help share it because they're giving me a lot of problem now. Do that for me if you would. If you believe in the platform, join up. Okay. Thank y'all for watching.